So please welcome our fabulous cast. Ladies first, please welcome Jane McCary. Looking lovely. Any seat you'd like, my lady? Sit with me, yes. Next up, please welcome Paul Riley. Yes. And please give a warm welcome to Gavin Mitchell. And last but certainly not least, please give it up for Sanjeev Kohli. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Give it up for our amazing cast. Hello. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how's it going? You've come to the right place. Well, let's just go down the line here. I'll start with you, Jane. How have you been enjoying Aberdeen Comic Con? Oh, I've loved Aberdeen. Is this on? Can you hear? Yes, it is. Woo. Oh, it's good. So I've never been to a Comic Con before, and I'm dying to have a wee nosy around the stalls, but there's so much happening round about me, and they'll tell you I am Isa. So I'm trying to see, I'm saying, what's happening? Who's he? Saying, what's he? So yes, I'm loving it. I'm having a ball. Wonderful. Lovely. And how about you? How are you enjoying the Comic Con? Truth be told, right? <laughs> Uh-oh. Jean, Jean's hungover. Oh. Right? She got two hours sleep last night. She just can't hack it anymore. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm having a great time, absolutely magic. Um, and we're going to go for some food later, I believe. I don't know. Um, and Why have food when it gets in the way of drinking? Do you well, know what because, I mean? Because the casino's open late. Oh, right. Ah, oh, when you say food, you mean crisps. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Sanjeev, have you been enjoying Aberdeen Comic Con? Well, it's quite special for me because uh, this is the first time I've been led back to Aberdeen since that incident. Oh. I know some of you were there, and yeah. I'm really sorry that toddler went on fire, but it w really wasn't really wasn't my fault. Um, and I tried to put the toddler out with a pension, and I just made it worse. It happens. No, um, Doesn't it make you a bad person? It, no. uh, it's weird. I mean, it's my first convention as uh, even a punter, let alone like signing stuff. So you look up, oh, there's Chewbacca. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a stormtrooper with a kilt. Hiya. Um, so we just think uh, it's Saturday. Uh, someone's put acid in my coffee. But you know, it's, it's really lovely and surreal. And you've all been lovely. Can you give, all give yourselves a big round of applause? You've all been yes. lovely to us. Thank you Let's so much. Hear it. Except well, for you. No, oh, yeah. stop I, clapping. I, you I, you've been tracking. trouble. I, you've you, been horrible. You speak. Everyone else is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> You're lovely. Yes, a well-deserved round of applause. Well, we actually want to make sure that you're interacting with us as well. So please, if you'd like a, to ask a question, we have microphones on the left and the right. So please don't be shy. Come and ask a question. But a quick can question for me. Yes, ma'am. Can you understand anything that we're saying? I can. <laughs> but I've been in oh, we'll since since that. Uh, at first, no. <laughs> at first, it was a lot of smiling and nodding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, whiskey. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> scotch. Yeah, a scotch. What, iron you're on whiskey? Haggis. I do love a whiskey. Uh, have a you scotch. been to an orange walk yet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm no, no, there's a date. There we go. That was, a, that, was, that was an invitation. Come with me on an orange walk. Oh, sweetheart, I fancy an orange I've walk. I've got a medium-sized bowler hat you can wear. <laughs> I've got a big drum you, you can bang. You shared a full bag of fudge. I don't know how this is. I just cool. think you should have the whole Scottish experience. It isn't all Comic-Cons. We're on a sugar high officially. Well, wow, we've got a question right over here from this lovely lady. Hi. Oh, um, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Yeah. So this is a question for all of you, actually. Um, I know time allows, but uh, have any of you got a favourite episode of Soul Game? Sanjeev. <laughs> I, um, I think we all love doing the 70s uh, Hogmanay throwback episode because that was genuinely like being in a flat in 1974. They'd sourced all the wallpaper, all the bits and bobs, all the ceramic owls, everything it was properly sourced online and it was like being in a flat in 1974, like I say, and that was a real laugh. And I also liked, from a very selfish point of view, I liked when Navid had, had his midlife crisis and uh, had the whiskey and sang The Carpenters and get carried out. Having been punched squarely in the balls by Mina, yeah, Baroka. Um, so I, but it tends to be moments rather than episodes. You yeah. think of moments from from episodes. So yeah. Can um, I tell you, it was a body double in that episode for me. Can oh. we just put that out there? It was a body double, and she had two puddings at lunchtime. It was damnable. 
<laughs> I was raging, sure I was. Uh, my fa- my favourite episode. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Thanks. My favourite episode was uh, the penultimate episode, uh, Winston's wedding, and oh, I, yeah, I loved yeah. that just because it was. It selfishly, it was a nice chance for me. I got to meet Midge and Amy McDonald and Claire Grogan and all. No, that. no, Claire Grogan got got to meet you, Gavin. Oh, stop yeah. it, you! What are you like? Uh, oh, give me a ready, and then, <laughs> and, then uh, and also in that episode we 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 did the wedding in the People's Palace in Glasgow, and it was a night shoot, um, and there was some booze sneaking about. I must admit, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. We had a wee drink earlier, and. Uh, and we had the bluebells singing Young at Heart. So suddenly when the bluebells started playing, everybody started dancing, not just for the wedding, but the crew as well. And so it was just a brilliant night, but it was also kind of tinged with sadness because we knew it was the last time that we'd all be together for the show. So everybody was kind of looking at each other, but realizing we were kind of saying goodbye. We'd never all be together again like that. So that's a really special night for me. And a Keep special it like Gav. Aye, that's brought you all down, eh? That's cheered up your Saturday. Well, um, uh, Sanji, you've kind of hoovered up my favourite episode uh, <laughs> after me, but that's, that's fine, that's all good. But I, I want to give you a wee bit of inside information. I was actually at a party on New Year's night when everybody got trapped in the lift, and that's where the storyline comes from when we go back to the future, or is it the other way about? I can't quite remember. Um, and so uh, f- about five guests left our party to go to another party as you do on New Year's Eve, or New Year's Day, um, and they all got stuck in the lift. And about two hours later, somebody came into the living room and says, they're still stuck in that lift. <laughs> and they, they had to get the fire brigade out, um, and then they wedged the doors open, and they all uh, hooked them out of the lift. So not a lot of people know that. That's uh, me finding that out now, Paul. Uh, that's the first time I've heard that, actually. Uh. Jane. Jane McCarty. Jane, Jane McCarty, ladies think and gentlemen. Probably Cairds is my favourite episode oh, because, again, sometimes it's hard for us because it's maybe not the one that you watch on screen and say that's your favourite. It's the time that you had when you were filming it. And again, that was a time we were all in the room together. We were having a great carry on and it was just really good fun. So I think maybe that one for me. I wasn't in that episode. <coughs> oh, sorry, Sam. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Awkward. We've got a question over here to the right. Hi. Um, hi, hi, my hi. name's Alex. I have a question for Bobby. Hiya. Hi, Alex. <laughs> um, in the episode where you and Naveed switched um, roles in your occupation, Oh yeah. Um, did it feel weird not being in the same place you've been in for almost every single episode? Yeah, it, it, was, it was very strange, but it was really, really nice because I think Sanjeev and I... Well, Sanjeev got get out a wee bit more than me uh, but Bobby was always stuck in the clansman most of the time behind the bar so any chance I got to get out I, I got a bit overexcited so <laughs> but it was really nice to be in the Vids because I, it was only till the, the second last series or something I ever went into the Vids and, and for Naveed and Bobby to actually meet Naveed had been into the clansman but I'd never been into Naveed's shop and then to take it over was great and to be with Mina was brilliant uh, it was really, really great fun. So uh, it was, uh, it was brilliant for me. It was an honour to be in the Vids. So yeah, it was great. And it, how did you find the Klansman? Well, I'd been in, uh, like you say, well, you had been in the shop, but it, I think it was, that it was, was the same series I came into well, your yeah, shop. Yeah, that's right. For the was the bleach thing, the uh, yeah, the seventies yeah. rollback. That's right. I'd been in to the Klansman. It's actually one of my favourite scenes. Is when everyone's gone to Hyperdales, and I do the big speech about where we're all used, huh? shopping like Bosch spice on coke. And that was actually, it was almost like that was as Shakespearean as I've ever been, let alone Naveed. I got to do that kind of quite serious speech in the Klansman with, with, with everyone there. So that was a pretty special moment for me. So, but like N- Naveed, you know, doesn't drink, what I heard. So I'm, I'm hardly in the Klansman. So to be behind the bar at the Klansman was brilliant. And I loved the bit where I got to scush time with the... Uh, Oh yeah, with, with the with the with the that's gun. That was nice fantastic. To get some discussion. Oh, that yeah. Aye. The other <laughs> yeah. thing that's maybe worth mentioning is when we film the show, uh, Sanjeev gets a fortnight off because it takes two weeks to film all the Klansman stuff because we do it all the all the same time. Yeah. So he's sitting with his feet up in the Canaries, <laughs> trying trying to grow my beard. <laughs> yeah. It takes that long. It takes that long. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, everybody kind of gets nervous about the Klansman scenes because it takes up so long. We just know we're going to be in the pub for like at least a couple of weeks. But people are like, oh no, it's like, it's like the Battle of the Somme. Aye, it's aye, <laughs> aye. So yeah, they're long, long days, the Klansman days. Alex, thank you so much for your question. We're going to go over here to the Cheers, left. Cheers, Alex. Thank you, Alex. I got... Oh, hello. Yep. hello. Hiya. Hey, I got a question. Can you speak to the microphone? Yep, thank you. Is that better? Yeah. I got... Two questions. So, would you ever make remake or sell game? And what's you guys' favorite quote from sell game? Oh. Favorite quote that we've done ourselves or from other characters? Other characters and yourselves. Okay. Oh. I always really liked the line, you, you know, when the the, the pub quiz, and and uh, what's the name? What's the name of the um, the character that comes in and that you fancy? Oh, uh, um, Margot. Thank you. Thank, thank you. God, you're here. Hi. Yeah. Um, so, Margo, I've tried to block out my so head because she broke my heart. Aye. So, so I just come in and say that there might be some romance between Bobby and Margo. And I, I mean, it's, I just love how it's written. It's, it's like, gear to rest, guys, he couldn't get his hole in a barrel of fernies. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's just when he, I just completely threw it away like Naveed does because that's how he, you know, his delivery is. But when you think about it, he couldn't get his hole in a barrel of fernies. It's a, it's like, it's like hip hop. It's like <laughs> jazz. It's so rhythmical, and I totally just tossed it away. I'm sure it's, it's in Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> it's in Hamilton. <laughs> so that was People my. People say that, it in I, Hamilton. I think. That, I, think <laughs> I think that was my my favorite line. But they've they've all got lines that I love. But that's probably my favorite line that I've said myself. Um, Gavin. Oh, th thanks, Paul. Um, <laughs> my fa my own favorite line is probably just simply the final line. Uh, oh, yeah. Look who it is, isn't he? Keep it light, Gav, I said. I Bring everybody down again. Um, it's, I just feel like, because it was funny, some of the people who have come over today, and there was somebody came out with a theory about that line, and everybody's got their own theories about who is Bobby talking to, or what, you know, when he looks down the lens, and somebody said, because <laughs> it was one of those questions, that, what ever happened to Tams Wayne? You know, it's the classic we always get. And somebody said today, they said, it's Tams Wayne you're talking to, isn't it? Because... <laughs> That can be the only one that's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh God, I never thought that's a brilliant theory. But everybody's got their own wee theories. And don't I, I, we, don't, I we, don't like to say what mine is. We fixed I like, that it's in the live ambiguous. show, do you remember? In the live show, we fixed that because I don't know if anybody saw the last still game live at the Hydro. She then comes into the pub and we changed the line to look who it is, nay, right? Which meant because we're all dead in the Hydro show, meant we were all in the, in the Klansman the day that you delivered the last line, but we were dead. Ah, ah, ah. Shows you how much I was paying attention. There you go. There you go. I've, um, uh, to probably the straw poll for today would be shut it, Tadger, right? So I've heard that, I've heard that plenty of times. But um, my favourite um, would be, um, do you mark your diary to get on my tits? <laughs> <laughs> I love when you fast forward me to the punchline. Yeah. Yeah. I love when he does that. The end, mind. The end, mind. That's right. <laughs> Billy Mac and George's deed. Uh, uh. But I think, because I always get a hard time when she's not a bad old soul and I always fight her corner when we get the scripts or when we did get the scripts. But I think probably for me, my favourite was when I say, you know, with the act two, with the Julius Caesar, and she goes, act two. I never ate two of anything. <laughs> and it's again, she was just being a good soul in the place, not really doing anything wrong. So um, that's probably my favourite line. I actually, one of my favourite lines, I stole it by mistake. So um, we were doing, so when we first get our scripts, before we film a series, we do what's called a table read. Literally sit around a table, you know, like one of Vladimir Putin's massive tables. <laughs> and um, and we, just, we just read the script. I cancelled for saying that. Um, <laughs> And we just sit, we sit around. hand through the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> we Is sit around, with side? all distancing themselves. So we sit around and we read the scripts and that's the first time that we, you know, like hear the lines ourselves. And it was the episode where, now let me get this right, Jack was going out with Barbara from the charity shop. Oh yeah. yeah. And Victor's come in to say that Jack, that, that, that she's married. So she says, and we interrupt him and, and I say, what's he, a junkie? And then who's it says, a, a stripper. And then the line is firing ping pong balls out of a duff, bang, bang, bang. Now, see, thing is, in in the in the actual script, that wasn't my line. I misread that that was my line. I just by mistake read it, firing ping pong balls out of a duff, bang, bang, bang. And lo and behold, 
when we got to the actual uh, set, I had the line. I thought, I must try that again. <laughs> oh, I've taken that by a mistake. But I wasn't meant to say that line, but I, that was good. <laughs> Great question. We're going to go to a question on the right. Um, I'm Sophie. And Hi, have you actually ever worked the jobs that you've worked in when you were on set? That is a good brilliant question. question. Um. Oh, well, I've worked behind a bar because sometimes I help behind the classman. I have worked behind a bar, uh, and I haven't ever worked in a shop. You, you did. You did used to clean a school, though. Remember? <laughs> no, she never. She never used to clean a school. <laughs> I did it clean in a school. No, um, no. I think the only one would be behind the bar for me, but never in a shop. Oh, I did work in a shoe shop for a wee while, though. But does that count? I'm not sure if that counts. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. I think my. Um, <clears throat> A uh, former job, uh, as alluded to in the show, is working in the shipyards. And that comes from my father, who was a shipbuilder. Um, and so Ford and Greg just took that and they transplanted it. And so he was dead proud of being a shipbuilder when he was working. Um, so that was my former um, occupation, as I remember it anyway. <laughs> I No, absolutely. <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've never Gavin. worked. I've, I've drank in lots of bars, <laughs> but I've, I've never actually worked in one. I um, worked in one. I got fired after the first night. <laughs> yeah. I was dead. But at the end of the, the final series, one of the prop guys, because sometimes the boys never ever timed how quickly you pull a pint of beer and serve it and things like that. So it never worked in real time. So I would have pints under the bar and I would top them up and try and time it and things. So I just had to listen closely and take my own timing. But the, the, by the time we did the final series, there was one day when I had my lines. It was a big long scene, people coming in and out. And I poured a pint in real time and put it down at the right point and I was like yes <laughs> it's taken me nearly 20 years to do that but I, mean, I so I was quite secret, chuffed right? there was one tap in the Klansman that was real beer yeah yeah. and so we would tip him the nod about 4 o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon come on hurry up come on yeah. and we would all get a pint there was also one bottle of real whiskey oh was there yep I never knew uh, that I, I didn't I, I, there wasn't many people told about that but um <laughs> But I, in fact, we used to, we saved that for the guests sometimes. And Paul Young, whenever Paul Young finished, the place Shug, he would finish and he'd give us a wee wink and I'd go and get my real whiskey and go, there you go, Paul, whenever he, he rapped when he'd finished a series. We, we also had a can of Diet Coke in the Winnebago, right? But, um, <laughs> and, uh, but it gave you an electric shock when you touched it. <laughs> and if, everybody who would come onto the show, they would come in and they would come away and come on and go. Can you pass me that can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was them. They were. They, they loved it after that. They, they but can it, we, when we did first start filming Still Game, it was a real bar. It was a bar in yeah. Mary Hill. Oh, God. And yeah. there was bullet holes right along the gantry. And you'd be filming and gangsters would burst in and go, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and just leave. So it really genuinely was yeah. dangerous. And what that's why the... they had to build the set of the pub. We, and there was once, there was an extra. I was going to ask you. you to... <laughs> no, I was going to ask you. going to say it. Go, go. So there was an extra and he had. Um, this he is to, gross, by This the is way. horrific. He had to play <laughs> pool. So when you're filming, you're oh, filming God, 12 hours a day. So he was holding the pool stick, bored, and fell asleep on the queue and popped his eye out. I told you it was gross. Aye. What, you <laughs> want your money back? And then a dog <laughs> ate it. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. Sorry, it didn't happen. Claudia, it that in. didn't happen. That, are you going to be sick? <laughs> Ah. Ah. Claudia, well, By the way, Claudia from Back to the Future, everyone. Yay. Yay. She is next up on our Q&A panel. Who's so never seen Still Game one. and she thought we were going to give you education there. So you've had a smattering. So it's all on Netflix. He's saying... I'm, are you speaking he's English? Saying, are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> he's saying he's hoovering all your money from the stalls. Yeah, yeah yes. that one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, you heard that all right? Aye, aye. <laughs> Here's what she wants to hear. Oh yes, you've you've all to follow Claudia on TikTok. What's your yes. what's your handle? What's your name on TikTok? Handle? I don't know. Claudia Wells official on TikTok. Brand new. To She's TikTok. got 13 followers, so she really needs a boost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely discuss. Oops, selfie, everybody. Woo. Woo. 
We will definitely discuss Claudia's TikTok and don't go anywhere after this panel ends because it'll be Claudia's turn. But we're going to get back to the questions. Thank you, Claudia. Here's a question on the left. Hi, my name's Kevin. And um, what? who did you not like working with? Uh, oh, 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 Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, wow. See, it's, Good question. For the most part, I mean, we all get on really well. but What? But when the drinking starts... Yeah. Uh, Run about but, half nine in the morning once we're drunk. I uh, mean, uh, you're getting nice, Gavin. Now, okay, this is <laughs> this is nice, sober, Gavin. But when he's had three or four triple glimmer Angies of a Tuesday, like I said about half half nine in the morning. No, no, like, genuinely, like the core cast um, all get on really well, and it, all the guests that have come in have been really nice as well. Like uh, Robbie Coltrane. Yeah. Um, uh, Kevin Waitley. Well, I actually never got to meet him, but he was meant to be a sweetheart. Yeah, he was lovely. Craig yeah. Ferguson was Craig amazing. Ferguson was lovely. Yeah. He was brilliant, actually. Uh, I can honestly say without lying that we actually all got on really well and it was a, a real laugh to go into your work. I mean, because like, we used to film in, was it February? Really horrible dark mornings. And we're all in really early to get the makeup on. I was in the makeup chair one and a half hours, getting that beard glued on, getting my hair glued back, getting away into me getting the stuff on our face that dries to look like wrinkles trying really to do Troy's videos at oh, 8 in the morning oh, oh. oh no Gav you got, on, you got on really well with your partner I in the <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a scary person to meet she <laughs> no you, could, you couldn't really um, have anybody bad on set or anybody that you didn't get on well any with egos, because Gavin. it was no because it, it had to be fun I think that's what makes it successful in a way as the kind of fun that everybody was having and, and having a laugh and that, that's what kind of works and comes over I think and also for the people to come in that we, we had to make it comfortable for people because it's it's quite intimidating for a lot of people to walk on to still game they get quite uptight they were walking into this big thing for them and you know what's, what, yeah. what I mean imagine imagine in? joining the Spice Girls how hard that would be it is, as I, the I, six I, Spice I Girls Spice imagine Girls Kevin two years. you were asked to join the Spice Girls how hard that would be that's what it's like walking onto the set of still game so Talk we have to be really nice, don't we? Yeah, on, on the subject of working with people, right? Uh, the four of us here, right? This is not a trick question, by the way. Who out of the four of us has worked with Robin Williams? She's, she just pointed an empty bottle at you. Maybe she's going to launch it, I don't know. The answer, the answer is two of us. Two of us. Me. And him. No, oh, there you, you are now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It went straight to a video. Don't worry about it. Aye, aye. But also, I've worked with are... both crankies. <laughs> both so crankies. So strange. And so have I. Uh, but we, although, uh, can I just tell you that although that we are all good friends, there was a lot of mincing that was carrying on all the time. Yeah. It wasn't just a coke can. It was non-stop. And this shin here, when Mark Cox had just split up uh, with his girlfriend, and he'd gone and got himself. Can we say fanny magnet? It was a fanny magnet, right? Oh. It was some fancy sports car, right? So he was driving about and he was showing off and he was taking the makeup girls out in his car. This shin, when Mark was it on was set, it, it was you. It was to me. Anyway. Carry well, on. it was your Ford, went over to a garage and got a Reggie plate to make for Mark's, the back of Mark's car. And for two days, he was driving about with that Reggie plate. I don't know if they're children. Oh, right. Can oh, we God. tell them what it said? Yeah. Two days, ball bag. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so that is your pals. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But We're I never done friends. that. I never done that. Well, we are amongst royalty because we have a princess to the right that would like to <gasps> ask. Oh, it's chair. Princess Amelie. Yeah. Oh, are you going to go to Prince Philip's memorial? <laughs> <laughs> Beyond an appropriate. Perfectly legitimate question. Yeah. Harry's not going. Megan's not going. Sign of respect. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's your question, darling? Jane. Yes, Jane. darling. What is your favourite princess and why? Oh. My favourite princess. Princess Anne. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, Jane was working with Princess Anne yesterday. I was working with Princess Anne yesterday. Uh, no, my very favourite princess. Do you mean like a Disney princess? <gasps> oh, I don't know. Who would that be? Um, Cinderella's not a princess. Who's a princess in Disney? 
Bell? You, can't, you can't ask the, the answer. <laughs> oh, Belle. was Belle a princess? She becomes a princess. She becomes a princess. Okay, maybe Belle. Maybe Belle. Is, is she Baby a princess? Belle. Baby Belle, the, the cheesy cheese. princess. Baby Belle, the cheesy princess. <laughs> princess of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Belle. Oh, oh why? Says, what, darling? Also said, why is she? Why? 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 Sorry, I yeah, <laughs> just answer the question, Jane. Get your money's I'll worth. I'll tell you why. Because because she's a a, a nice snack in the mid evening. No. <laughs> so you're not yes. hungry enough for a full meal. Sanchez, we get us called Bell. Yes. So I think it's because she doesn't judge by appearances, and she reads lots of books, and she <laughs> she's, she's got making a very up everybody. kind heart. A kind heart like you. More than that. Excellent. Oh, question. come on, have a word with yourselves. Uh, applaud by the that, Keith. <laughs> her brother Harrison, am I right? Says she has the kindest heart. Well, you've of even anybody bored her, she's ever away. Known. She's oh. giving she's up, Jane. She could smell the Keith coming out your mouth. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're going to go to the left of the question over here, please. Hiya. Abba, 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 abba. Here we go. Hiya, my name is. You just Tiny. said shut it, Tadget, me about an hour ago. <laughs> and you better not say two pints, you to me oh, no, you'll be at that door my, my name's Tyler and my questions already been answered but what's your second favourite line oh. second favourite oh. line or no. even your least favourite oh least favourite oh no um, I remember when I said it it was the sort of thing that people were asking me to say and it was mind the jack they sell by day to sell the life full of fusty fish <laughs> I quite like saying that that was quite good fun right, oh. I'll go um so I'll split the line with you, right? I'll start it and you finish it, right? I run a tight ship. No, a shite tip. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Watched that episode last night, actually. No. Wow! Well. <laughs> we're, okay. we're pushing the, the boundaries of taste here a bit with you, right. Tyler. But let's try it. Um, you're fairly putting on the beef, Jack. Do you remember what comes next? That's oh, because oh, oh, oh. every time, time I... Because every time I shag your wife, she makes me a sandwich. Oh, no. <laughs> Holy moly. Sorry, Tyler. Oh, I watched that episode last night. Oh, so I watched that. I've... That one goes out to all the kids. There you go. That's happy Easter. That's for Princess Amelie. There you are. <laughs> We've come a long way from the princess question, haven't we? Yeah. We sure have. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Cheers, Tyler. We've got a question on the right. Oh. Hello. Uh, my name is Reese. My question is, what, what's all your favorite characters except for yourselves? Oh. oh. I think we probably... I think we all probably like the same character, actually. Uh, well, certainly I think Sanj and I do. We, I love Isa. Uh, Isa's my favourite character because I just think I can't believe she's here because I can't stand her as a person um, I mean as a person she's as horrific a person, she's a horrific person oh, but, horrible. <laughs> but uh, I love e Isa actually evil e e I, evil <laughs> give me Putin any day um, <laughs> but <laughs> no I love Isa because I think Jane's amazing and things like there's a, a scene where uh, Jack and Victor are, are going out to celebrate their friend's anniversary that they've, they've been together as pals for so many years and Isa comes into the lift and is, figures out where they're going and she does it in such a roundabout way and only Isa can and that happened because the episode was, was too short at the time and Ford and Greg had to come up with something to fill out the time and they didn't want to do anything <laughs> so they kind of went, ah, Jane so they, they wrote this, this speech and gave it to Jane, and Jane, I think you only had minutes, basically, to learn that. It was really, really fast, uh, and went in and did that speech, and people love that speech, and it's beautiful and perfectly done, uh, and, and it's just the way that Isaac explains things and wee details in her speeches I love and stuff. I just love her. I think she's great, so yeah. Aww. Aww. I saved Isa, Jane, no you. <laughs> I'm going to go Isa as well, um, because not because of the dynamic that the two of us have. Um, it's just a brilliant device that, the, I mean, anything 
just makes Winston flip out, right? But her especially. Um, and you know that, we were talking about that the other day, when you're fast-forwarding, you, you get to the punchline and all that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So it would definitely be Isa for me as well. Two down, one to go. Well, obviously I love Isa, but I, um, I think the most sort of underrated character is Tam. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, I, th I think he always cracks up. Mark Cox is a very, very funny human being. Yes. Anyway, um, and uh, I think Tam, because uh, Tam and Naveed have got a sort of relationship, like going to the cash and carry together, quite homoerotic. Um, uh, so, so Mark and I have had lots of scenes together, and it's always a joy work working with with Mark. So I'd I'd go with it's it's a I'd say it's a dead heat between Tam and Isa. I, I couldn't say between any of you guys because I, I just genuinely no, Jane, no, pick one of us. No, 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 I, I genuinely couldn't because pick one of your wings, Jane. Pick no. one of your wings, Jane. <laughs> we do. Would have been number three. Don't we? Blind date. We've had great scenes together in the big lovey, and when we to do our kind of fake oh, sex scene in the bed, Jesus. we laughed till we cried, <laughs> and he rolled off the bed because we laughed so much, the and then get jammed down the side of the bed, and we couldn't get him out from the side of the bed. So we, we had so many good times and Gavi have always said it's like Isa and Bobby are, I feel like he's my son because my son Colin, you never see him, he's, never, he, he's not good to me, he doesn't look after me. So we always felt like we'd really close bond yeah. and then of course Naveed and Isa, so we've had our wee woohoos as well over the years. So oh, will they, won't they, will they, won't they. So we've had lots of lovely scenes and really close stuff as well. So I, I, I honestly couldn't say with you guys, I, I wouldn't be fair to say, but the one person that I think lights up my life when she comes <laughs> on set yep. is Shamshad, who oh. plays me the... Doesn't she, though? We hear her laugh coming. Like, see if it's like a big studio and you hear her laugh from over there and then you'll smell pakora or nan bread. She would bring us in homemade oh, nan bread and we would go... Can we just stress that kids. she made the pakora and nan bread? She doesn't smell yeah. no, she yeah. pakora smell. and nan bread. No, Jane. no, no, no. She would make it and we Thank would you. go, oh, yes. So she did, she made us laugh every day and she's like one of the nicest people in the yeah. world, doesn't she? So for that reason, I will say Mina. And also Mina did get to say some properly outrageous things. So oh, really when funny. you see the lines translated in English, basically Ford and Greg will give her the line and she'll translate it. So this happened once, right? So do you remember the episode um, where Jack and Vitt to get the car? The oh. Skoda. So they come into the shop and they say they've got a Skoda. And I say... No, that's no much of a fanny magnet. <laughs> and then Mina does the line, we know who the real fanny is, okay? So they've given her the line, we know who the real fanny is, and they, she's gone off to translate it. So the day we're filming, Shamshed is pacing up and down. She's sitting on her head. She says, oh, what is it? I can't see the line. I can't see it. I can't see the line. I said, what's the matter? And the problem is, right, there is no real word for fanny in Punjabi, right? <laughs> Because it obviously fa Fanny means what it means, right? But it also means idiot, <laughs> numpty, glaikit, ne'er do well. There's no equivalent <laughs> idiomatic translation in Punjabi. The word that means Fanny means sports come in. <laughs> it's basically sort of gynecological. And she said, "If I oh artisan, hey, you owe me a tenner. Aye, get out of my shop, you thieving pedal pin bastard." <laughs> I'm Metal talking Mickey to you. was much better than you, Aye. beat it. One beat robot, it. one robot in the shop at any one time, thank you're you. Out. <laughs> out, out your ass. Out! 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 Oh, now I feel better. Well, that will never happen again. Eh? Ruined my honey, don't you, wee pedal bin? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so she said, I can't, I can't say this word. And I said, you're right, you can't say that word. You will get hunted. So um, she said, what will I say for, for Fanny? I said, okay. Just say Punani, because that's what Ali G says, and it doesn't mean anything. So go go home tonight, go on Netflix, find, what's the episode called? Is it Brief? The car? And she says Punani, and it doesn't mean anything, and it means that's why she's still got a visa, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> love it. We've got a question on the left. Hi. Um, which big star would you love to have seen in Still Game that never appeared? There was people that, who were meant to appear in Satellite Didn't Happen. Peter Kay was meant to be in an oh, episode, well, unfortunately. Nice. And then he, at the last minute, he couldn't do it. That would have been great. I'd have loved that. Mm. Um, so many, so, there's so many musicals, like people uh, in bands and stuff, which thankfully yeah. you got to meet, like Amy and Midge and, yeah. and, and all that. Jim Kerr's a massive fan. Yeah, a lot, of, yeah. A lot of musicians love it, and they take it in the tour bus and stuff yeah. like that. So you, you find a lot... Uh, strangely, we talked about this before, that the Foo Fighters... 
really, I really right. loved yeah. Still Game. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was because one of the Foo Fighters went out with a Glasgow girl and she passed on Still Game to them and they started watching it in the tour bus. And the next thing, the Foo Fighters were massive Still Game fans. So, and and so that L- L- Lady, Lady Gaga uh, likes Mrs. Brown's boys. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I would. I, anyway. I would love uh, Billy Connolly to even know what Still That's Game what I was is. Say, Billy I would love Connolly. for him to even know who we were, let alone you know. But imagine Billy Connolly and just oh, coming into the shop I mean, or into right. the Klansman. Yeah. How yeah. amazing would that be? And I believe I think Sean Connery had seen it as well. Was yeah. about yeah. Well, well, Peter K was meant to be. You, did you just say that? Yeah, yeah. Peter. Oh, sorry. Aye. Yeah. So Peter K came to see the live show. He was meant to be in it. That would have been amazing. So Sean Connery does know the show then? He did know the show. And also uh, Robin Williams, I took oh. over a copy oh, of the you? first series, a, a still game, and, and he saw the show and really he loved it. Because he, and he knew Paul and I, so he was like, oh yeah, that's Paul and stuff. He, and so he, he loved it. Yeah. He, he said to me, we, we finished filming and we all got these tiny wee business cards. They look like after eights, right? And there was a handwritten phone number on the back. And he says to me, because he was going over to LA, he said, do you think I should phone it? And I went, definitely get it phoned. And he, he phones the number. Hello, uh, 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 I'm looking for Robin. This is Robin. <laughs> and you can take it up from there. Well, it was for, I kind of, I blew him out five times. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you waited 10 minutes between each time. Steady. <laughs> Overheard my car park after midnight. Um, and uh, for various... Various reasons I, I, I didn't see him, and, t- and then eventually we arranged to meet, and it, it was just bonkers. So I, I visited Robin a couple of times, uh, but I it was just well, it was wild when we met him anyway. But I he was always very generous, and when he came over here, he invited me up to Billy Connolly's and things, but I, I never went because I was just far too shy. I just felt Oh my God! There was all these people, like Steve Martin and Robin Williams. Gav, you'd have made an arse of it. Be honest I with yourself. I would have made an arse of it. I'd you'd have got really drunk and stripped off, like Doug <laughs> Steeman, or something like that. Well, but that's Robin. Is that funny? <laughs> Lighting your own fires. Uh, uh, Sean Connery. Uh, like who, who invited him? Who invited him? And another question ruined for you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, no, I Paul, Paul and Jane. Well. Paul and Jane. Who would you like to have starred in Still Game? I would have said Billy Connolly as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I absolutely Billy Connolly for me too. Yeah. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't sure how to transition from that physical comedy going down on there. Uh, we've got a question on the right. Hiya. Um, hi. Me and my big brother love Still Game. Um, I was going to ask Paul, what do you think of the dynamic between Winston and Stevie? Oh, oh good Stevie, 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 Stevie. Um, so you're obviously not old enough to gamble yet, right? But you'll, um, you, you, if you ask anybody who's over 18, they'll tell you the dynamic between any, any punter and a bookie because they are really... Any bookies in? <laughs> Horrible people. It's a Saturday. <laughs> it's a Saturday, that's right. I, um, so uh, no, it's a, it's a great dynamic. But the, the other really good thing about it is is Matt Costello. He's ah. a, a brilliant actor as well, and he's got great comic timing. And if if I can think of one example off the top of my head, it would be when he puts the pens into oh, the thing. Oh, genius, genius! And it ends right on my punchline, where I swear, obviously. Um, and he, uh, the two of us just go out like that. I think we did one take or something. I can't remember, but um, that, that is that kind of goes round the clock. And then the very last one, before Winston really l- loses the rag and the hat comes off and all that usual. So, no, it's, um, it's great fun to be doing that. And obviously, any time Winston loses the rag, people love it. <laughs> Do you know also, I, mean? I, think, I think Matt is an angel of a human being. He's a really lovely guy with a really good energy. So yeah. when he plays a badger, I think you get more value somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then what, you meant he had to shave his head, poor guy. Oh, God, yeah. Take him back as his brother. No, that was hilarious, man. And no, he's a, a lovely it guy. It was a shame because they never uh, finished the scene in time when he shaved his head. Because he's like, how long do I have to look, look like this for? And for some reason, the weather or something, we never uh, finished it in time. So he had to walk around with a shaved head for another couple of weeks. And, it, <laughs> and he went for, he said he went for a curry with his wife. And, and had to wear a woolen tammy all the time so they wouldn't see his wee bald bit he'd shaved. And he said, just sat there with a tammy on, eating a curry, just sweating. <laughs> <laughs> with his wife going, oh, God. You know, but I, poor man had to walk about with a shaved head. Yeah. We've got a question on the left. Uh, I've got two questions. Uh, this for a whole cast. Uh, what was the hardest episode of Still Game to Film and your favourite two-pint jokes? 
Ah. Wow. That's for you, Gav, that second one, I think. I, th I think I, 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 I dressed up with Tyler, really. <laughs> my fa my favourite uh, look. I, I like, I, oh, they're, some, they're, uh, they're rough. <laughs> some of them say out loud, I'm afraid. Um, I'll maybe come back to that, but I like Ty. The, the, sam the sandwich one's the one that's quoted to you the most, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the sandwich one is the one that everybody kind of loves. You know, you've put on the beef jack. Uh, it's probably my favourite. Hardest episode, I don't know. For me, probably was the hardest one when we went in the, the, cl in, the, in, the water? in the water with the car. That was quite tough, just because we were in the water an awful long time. To be honest, and it was pretty cold. We um, were um, but, sorry, yeah. no, no. Um, we did. A, there was an episode we played the Neds at golf, um, and they end up they bury us in the bunker, um, <laughs> and so we came back for lunch. I remember this. We came back for lunch, and there was two coffins, right? So. <laughs> What's the deal with the coffins? Oh no, you get into the coffin and then we put the coffin in the bunk the, the coffin in the bunker and we cover you with sand up to your neck. So that whole scene when you look at it, we're actually sitting and lying in two coffins with the sand up to our neck. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> Have you kept the coffin, Paul, for like I right? I got it, when you need it? I, I got it at knockdown price, aye. <laughs> I've got I've grown out of it, but Emily, want to go? Mahogany brass handles, very reasonable. <laughs> One careful owner. Once you get that coffin. <laughs> oh, I got it at Comic Con in Aberdeen now. <laughs> a signed picture of Jet and a coffin. <laughs> 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 in the taxi company. Do you take coffins? Uh, uh, aye. <laughs> On my first whistle. <laughs> a wee story about coffins there. Ah, there you go. And I'm bringing it down. <laughs> Dear. We've got a question over here on the right. Bobby, two pints prick. Yay! Yay! Oh, someday to do it. Um, so obviously, you have all became massive household names in Scotland. Does that make your life a nightmare going about your daily business? Do you get a minute's peace when you go to do shopping and, and stuff like that? I mean, it's not Beatlemania. Do you know what I mean? It's, we, can, <laughs> we, can, we can do I mean, it, it, the thing is, Thing is, we're lucky in that I've always said that I, I can't help noticing that you're wearing a, a football-related uh, garment there, right? So if you're from Glasgow and you're a Rangers Celtic player, half the town loves you, half the town wants you in the ground, okay? We're lucky enough that probably 95% of people like the show, so people are generally nice and mostly polite. Maybe yeah. on three or four occasions have people been arseholes. I, I mean, I do. I mean, I remember there wasn't even that much of an inconvenience, but I'd taken my son to a soft play area. And, uh, and and I, as I do, I nodded off, like just doing the crossword, nodded off, and I woke up, someone was filming me. <laughs> and I thought, A, what were you hoping to do with that footage? And B, just wait till I wake up and then get a selfie, but why would you film me sleeping? But yeah, that's, yeah, you're, you're yeah. right. So you get that very, very yeah. rarely. I was, um, I, I sometimes get a bad back, and um, I was in... Uh, Curlers and Byers Road, and I was talking to a fella. My back was really sore, so I'm rubbing the bottom of my back, right, like this. I'm rubbing the base of my spine, and then I get home and I'm on Twitter, and somebody's taking a photo of me, and it said, "I'm glad I never shook your hand." <laughs> uh, they never even came and said hello. <laughs> they just went like that and fucked. Up. Yeah. <laughs> I never say that. Turn that camera off. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, tell that story when you were in, um, was it a charity shop in Mount Florida and you overheard people talking about you? Oh, oh, that was a great story. Oh, oh, it's, no, don't build it up, Jim. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not that great a story, folks. No, I'd been, I would been, uh, I, I was in this charity shop just looking at stuff and I overheard this woman behind me uh, talking to the, the woman at the counter and she was saying, oh, I've seen a lot of, the, apparently there's quite a lot of famous people live about here in Mount Florida and stuff, and that Peter Mullen and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and this woman said, I, I saw that, I would never recognise them, but I saw the guy, it was the kids recognised them, my two boys saw them in the, in the co-op across the road, and it's the guy that plays the barman at a still game. And I'm standing there with my back to him, and I thought, God, that's me she's talking about. And I heard her say, ah, he's a right miserable bastard. <laughs> and, uh, he swore as well. No, I went, but a <laughs> and uh, and I went what? And and I vaguely remembered that I was just in the shop and I was looking at the freezer, but just putting stuff in a basket. And these wee two two wee boys, tiny tots, appeared. And went, looked up at me, went, "Hi, Anna." I went, "Hi, ah." 
That's all that happened. But it had now spun into what a miserable bugger I was. You know, you got, you and, got and they were talking as it was in the shop. I was standing, I was standing like that, and I thought, what do I do? To I turn and run and go, hi, are you alright? You having a nice day? And, but I just walked out the shop like a crab, like that. <laughs> <with> my, <laughs> With my back to everybody, like, oh no, they think I'm a miserable bugger. So, oh. And now you're a miserable bugger that walks like a lobster. Uh, like, I've, you know, <laughs> oh, that's what that looked like, didn't it? Mm. Um, I was, but I, um, I, 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 uh, the house that I've got now has got a glass fronted door, right? It's just a big pane of glass. Um, nothing untoward about that. <laughs> and then, I ran about midnight one night, it was a Saturday night. I came out and it was like the shining, there was two wee boys in the other side of the glass looking in at me like that, right? <laughs> and, I, and I was like, this isn't the best experience, but as I say, they're few and far between. And I went, what's going on? And I opened the door and they said, we've got a, ch- <laughs> we've got a chicken curry here for you. <laughs> right? I said, I never ordered a chicken curry. No, no, we know you didn't. But um, the guy who normally del- delivers the chicken curry, he's our uncle and we've come through for Edinburgh. T- oh. T- did you not know this? No. We've come through for Edinburgh to give you a chicken curry. And I was like, what am I going to do? I said, come on in. And they were like, yay! And the, and the mo comes in, she's steaming, right? Yay! They've come all the way for Edinburgh. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Did, did some photos with them and did some signatures. And I was like, could you kindly just let me get in my bed uh, now? Did you eat the curry? Of course I did. <laughs> you ate the curry? I tanked it. I straight into the bin. Nice. I um, This happened actually before Still Game, before I was even vaguely sort of D-list celebrity, right? I used to present a show called Network East, right, which sounds like a railway franchise. It wasn't. It was a, it was a magazine show aimed at the Asian community in Britain, right? So it meant I was famous. I was brown famous. Do you know what I mean? So if I went to Inverness, Asians would recognise me in Inverness. So if I went to Birmingham, Asians would recognise me in Birmingham. So I'm in... Uh, I think it was in the top shop in, in Oxford Street. It was in London anyway, right? And um, I was having a look at a belt, right? And a guy just totally sidled up to me. I didn't even see his feet moving. He kind of like drifted over. <laughs> like he was on like wheels. And I thought, oh, I, I could tell he was staring at me. And the thing was, I wasn't used to being any, having any kind of celebrity status at this point. I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's recognised me. So I'll just kind of go over there and look at a shirt. He pops up again looking at me. Went to lingerie, he followed me there. So I think he's definitely following me, right? So I go back to the belts and he's there again and eventually after about five minutes, he plucked up the courage to speak to me and he says, it's you, isn't it? <laughs> I thought, well, technically speaking, yes, it's me, but um, what do you mean? Network East, it's you, present Network East. I said, yeah. Wow, what are you doing here? I said, buying a belt. He said, you have to buy your own belts? <laughs> I said, yes, it's Benson's day off. Yes, I buy my own belts. What did you think? Benson's day off. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was the spin-off. <laughs> I buy my own belts. Did you think? Yeah, he says, wow. So where's your bodyguard? <laughs> and to this day, I really regret not saying, he's by the door. No <laughs> sudden moves. But even before Still Game, this guy thought I'd have a bodyguard. It's weird that people would think, you know, like, you know, I mean, you know, I'm 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 a normal kind of guy. I, uh, you know, I, I sleep, I shite, I, <laughs> I eat a seventy-three finger Kit Kat. I'm a normal guy. You know, we're all normal people. I think as well, the, you guys get recognised more more than me because yeah. just because of the the hat and the wig. Jane, and the tell the story of when you had a cough. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, no. Well, this is true, right? So the very first ever episode we did of Still Game. And so I had just had a baby and I was breastfeeding, right? Oh. So <laughs> Sanj, I would like give the baby to him or to uh, Shamshad and then we'd be filming it and he'd be like that, Jane, Jane, and be lactating into my penny. It's absolutely <laughs> disgusting, right? It was terrible. So anyway, I was tired and like now I've got the cold. And so nobody knew the show, nobody knew anything. And I was feeling absolutely miserable, full of horrible flowy cold. And one of the runners took me to a chemist at lunchtime. So I'm dressed as Isa. And I went in and I said to the girl, my throat was like that. And I said, excuse me, if you get anything for a really sore throat and a cold. And she says, oh, she's waiting, I'll see you, darling. And then I said, oh, and I'm, I'm breastfeeding. Dressed as Isa. So she went round the back of the chemist. Three wee heads popped round like that. 
And then she came back. This is Glasgow. So kind as well. And then she took a bottle off the shelf. Of course, it says on it, do not take a breastfeeding. The runner came back in and at that point said, we really need to get you back now. And she went, oh, I think it was still like a home or something. <laughs> Gave me the bottle, wouldn't take any money. And she went, oh, darling, look after yourself. Which was so sweet. But um, yeah, that, that is true. So it was kind of strange because we were, I was only 31 when, I, you know, when we were doing it. So when we were playing these old people. But I remember as well, before we came back to do the first live show, and we'd all been doing different jobs, theatre jobs, telly jobs, and I teach as well. And I, I teach in different schools and I teach kids with additional support needs as well. So I was working in this school and it was a very Catholic school in Glasgow by chance. And when the boys said that they wanted to come back and do the show, they wanted to put me naked on the side of the city chambers. Now, why Isa would be naked in the side, I don't know, but they wanted a big publicity stunt where it was the full size of the city chambers. So I'd go in and say to the head teacher, would you mind if I'm naked on the side of the city? And he went, yes, I would. <laughs> I said, I'll need to go then, I'll need to resign. So that was the end of that. The swearing seems like nothing new, didn't it, after that story? <laughs> really? I like the Satan pensioner. You like the stories you told. <laughs> Great question, thank you. We're going to take a question from the left over here. Hi, my name's Connor. I've got two questions for you. Uh, the first thing is, what was it like filming the episode where Blighty's hard, hardest boozers were filming in the clans? Oh. And how much like creative freedom were you given? I can't hear, darling, sorry. sorry. And how much creative freedom were you given during that episode? Um, it, it, it was brilliant fun. It, it, just because we, we were talking about this recently, that, that, that there's that bit in Blighty's hardest boozers when, when he comes back to the pub and we've tried to make it look crazy and like, look! This is mental. And, and there's a guy with a condom over his head, like blowing it up. And there's a dog going, hur, 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 in and out the frame, which you'd never get away with now, but it was a guy just out of frame with a dog throwing it in the air. <laughs> and this wee dog was going, hur, hur, hur. Um, <laughs> guy with a condom. I think Jimmy Martin, who played Eric, the lovely Jimmy Martin, was drinking a yard of ale, I think. That's right. uh, and there was just, Ford was playing a harmonica. It was just mayhem, but it, it was utterly brilliant. And also, it was one of, I think it was one of the first episodes I remember that we were all involved in. Because I love that like, Naveed comes into the bar and he orders a goldie and then knocks back the drink and like, ping! The stage, eyes just twinkle and a smile appears. And then he starts singing. The Carpenters. Yes. I'm on top of the world looking <laughs> down on creation and the only explanation I can find. Mina! <laughs> <laughs> Serenading. You also had a question about creative freedoms in any episodes. Um, most of it is so tight. A lot of the time we don't we d didn't really have to change anything mm. or touch anything most of the time. It's all there on the page. Ford and Greg are such brilliant writers and they knew us so well yeah. that they, they knew how to write for us and how to play to our strengths, whether it be physical comedy or, yeah. or I mean, wordy stuff. But this happens a couple of times, Paul and I did a thing that we, we loved that we came up with, the, the, the episode of the, the quiz in the pub. And yeah. when oh, yeah. Kate Dickey gives birth uh, and the final shot is from between Kate's legs looking up to the bar and Ford and Greg have been doing their medical course and they're looking at her and they go, oh Jesus, and they go that way, they, they fall either side of their legs, they just go like that. <laughs> and it was Paul and I were standing at the bar, I was going, they fall and they reveal Paul and then there's me standing behind Paul and Paul said, be really funny if, if I went down, and I went, aye, and then if I went down, and we said to Ford and Greg and they were like, I do it. It'll only take seconds. So we get a couple of crash mats, and that's why we all go down like dominoes. They they go that way. Paul goes that way, and then I go that way, and we made that up in the spot. There's also um, yeah. There's also that thing of you know you read the script at the table read, um, and then four or five weeks later you might be filming it right, whatever it might be. And the scene where everybody talks about this, where the leg goes out the window, right? <laughs> So what, you, what you've got there is that, so the leg goes out the window, but you, what you don't realise until the day you film it is the way the shot was set up, I was on the other side of the room. So now I have to hop a right across the living room, which is, of course, gives extra laughs all the way. 
So that's another free laugh there. And we would constantly be doing that. Yeah. Constantly be doing physical stuff. Especially in the live show, actually. And again, yeah. uh, Paul, with his leg, you know, have, obviously having a real leg, he had it tied up all the time. And we found things that was... Uh, <laughs> There you go. Um, there was that thing when you walked and it was like the ding, 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 ding. Oh, yeah. That was, that was really funny. That was the, just pure accident. That was accident. There happened to be a wee kind of uh, mandolin type thing in the rehearsal room. And I went, oh, hold on a minute. Because originally in the script, it was a guitar uh, neck. And I went, no, no, make it this. And so they went back and they remade the prop. And every, every time I took a step, it went ting, 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 like that. And it was just that. It was, it was great. Free laughs, oh, eh? Brilliant. Yeah. Free laughs. Well, unfortunately, we've only got five minutes left, but I know you guys have both been waiting very patiently. So let's go to the right, and then our final question will be to the left. But you go ahead, sir. Hi, uh, my name's Kit. I just wanted to ask, uh, what was it like uh, on the final episode of uh, Still Game? <laughs> like, what were your feelings after the final episode get f got filmed? I mean, I think genuine. I mean, uh, we'd done it for 17 years by that point. And um, I don't think, I mean, we knew that was the last series. So we'd had time to sort of process that. Um, but when, I, I know like when, when we filmed the last, I know for my personally, we, we did our, all our fade outs. So what you guys see is obviously it's the Bob, that beautiful Bob Dylan song. What's it called again? It doesn't matter. Uh, and there's a montage of us just fading away. So you don't see how we die. You just know that we die. And uh, so it was a very innocuous thing where I'm just turning around sighing and then I fade out. So they had this big, what do you call it, a jib, this kind of big camera on a thing, a, a trolley dolly thing. Uh, and that's how they film it. So the thing moves very slowly and you move with it. So three or four takes of that. And then Michael, the director, you wouldn't normally see. He said, he said on this occasion, look, do you want to see that back? I said, I'd love to see that back. And when I watched myself fading out, it was like, you know, First thing I thought of was Back to the Future, actually. It was actually the first thing I thought of. But then I felt really, really sad because I still um, had to pay for my conservatory. <laughs> um, but no, it was, it was properly, even without the music, even just as a wee standalone shot without the montage, it, it kind of felt hit home then. And then like Gav was saying, when we filmed the wedding episode and we all spontaneously started dancing to Young at Heart when they were rehearsing and just knowing that this is the last time we'll... Be together and also remember um, when we did the scene at the by um, Loch Lomond, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. um, uh, which again was one of the last scenes you see on air, and that was the last time all of us would be together for a scene, and we kind of knew it then. And you know, it, it felt properly sad. As much as I dislike these people, <laughs> it's um, it wasn't. It was it was it was it was sad. It was Aye, sad. The, the end for me definitely felt that time we were in Loch Lomond at yeah, night, yeah, 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 filming at night, and, and it was all of us uh, together. Um, obviously, the fade-outs were done separately and at different times and stuff like that. So that definitely was the night I was sitting going, hmm, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, that that would be the last time we do this kind of thing. So that would be the moment for me anyway. It was, it was really poignant and it was it was really quite emotional. A lot of things that kind of happened in some of our personal lives as well uh, at that time when it was just, it was really sad. But that same night, because this is what happened always in Still Game, and we were all sitting looking into the campfire and it was quite serene. And just exactly where we were filming, a guy turned up <laughs> and wanted to camp, set up a tent right where we were. And they were saying, well, you can because we're filming. And he said, no, it, it has to be here because this is a spot where I was conceived. <laughs> yeah. How, remember that? Yeah. Yeah, How <laughs> random and odd is that? Why would you want to, and of all the forests and all the places he could have gone, he, th this exact spot. So he stood and watched us. We left about three in the morning and then he set up his yeah. tent. Yeah. So everything no, he I, ever did I, was odd. I understand that though. Sometimes I like to sleep in the, yeah. in the toilets of the Burger King. and It's just the way <laughs> down. I'm made of a garage man myself. So uh, weird. <laughs> and I, I found that sad, just uh, as I, can I touched on earlier, was it, it was weird for me because it was a bit different for me for everybody else because Bobby survived. But um, but the funny thing for me was I, I knew for a year and a half what was going to happen uh, to keep it a secret. And I found out by accident because one day I was in the, going to work uh, with Greg and I'd said to Greg, I think Bobby should start getting a wee bit of grey in his hair. It's just too dark, uh, and it, everybody was taking less time to put makeup on for them because they're getting older. I was taking up most of the time trying to make me look younger. So, um, 
And Greg said, no, no, Bobby can't go grey, he can't get any greyer. And then he proceeded to tell me this story, this is how Still Game will eventually end, and Bobby will be alone in the Klansman. And he never leaves Craig Lang, and that's his fate. And I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. And I, I, got, knew that. I got a big lump in my throat and started teeing up. I still find it quite emotional, actually, to think that's the end. But uh, when we came to do it, that day I turned up, nobody else was there, which was unusual as well. I got picked up alone, taken in, made up, walked onto the set, and hardly anybody would look at me. And everybody just kind of had their heads down. There was this eerie sort of respect. And, and we did it in one take, and we did a, a one more take for safety. And before we did the second take, the makeup girl came in to check my wig, and she gently turned me around and put a hanky in my hand. And, and I kind of looked and went, what? And she just pointed to my face, and I was crying. And I didn't realize, and uh, I still get kind of choked about it. And um, I, I get really emotional. And I, and I started to cry. And when I came off, everybody was crying, like a continuity woman. Michael was crying, our director, and different people. It might have been I was just shite. But um, <laughs> I think it was just years of, thank God we don't have to work with him again. But I came, and walked out, and Greg was standing, and he said, But you crying, you prick. And, <laughs> I went, aye, aye, and he gave me an enormous big hug. And then when he let me go, I could see the tears in his eyes. And so it was, it was really kind of like, oof. Um, it was a big, big moment, actually. And a huge responsibility to know that it's the final thing that will ever be said, you know. So, but yeah. the beauty of the show is, I think, what sort of sets it apart is it was never scared of being, of pathos. Yeah. Of, it wasn't always about the joke. I mean, that whole, there's no jokes in that montage. It's about people passing on and about the last man standing. And Still Game always had that in the tank. And it was almost like it was paying off 17 years of goodwill from you guys, from the fans. You know, like saying, Look, you've, you've earned this. And then, you know, I, there are people who say to me, how come you never see Mina's face? I said, have you not seen the last episode? And they say, no, because I can't bring myself to watch it. There are still people that haven't seen the last episode because it's too emotional for them. Oh, I feel horrible. We don't have time for any more questions. But that just means you're going to have to go to their autograph sessions and actually talk to them, get a photo op. I've got nothing left. I'm spent. Get an <laughs> autograph from the amazing cast of Still Game. Please give them a round of applause. Jane, Paul, Gavin, and Sanjeev. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. You guys are awesome. Keep it going for the cast of Still Game. What an amazing group. And of course, you can see them right here at Comic-Con Aberdeen today and tomorrow at their autograph booths.